Hello and welcome to this very special review of Hornby's Mallard. Um, this review is very special because um, on the 3rd of July 2018 uh, it will mark exactly 80 years since Mallard's record breaking run in which he travelled uh, 126 miles an hour on Stoke Bank in Lincolnshire uh, which beat a uh, German record, uh, the British record and still stands to this day uh, for making, making her the fastest steam locomotive of all time. The class was designed by Sir Nigel Gresley for the LNER. Um, in the so-called Race to the North, the LMS rivalled the LNER for the fastest train service from London to Scotland. Designed as a sleek, streamlined locomotive uh, developed from the A3 class, they were introduced in 1935, running, as the silver, running silver Jubilee services and maintaining 100 miles an hour plus in regular service. The first locomotive, 2509 Silver Link, uh, achieved 112.5 miles an hour on a press run, which at the time was a British record. The LMS then developed their streamlined Princess Coronation class, which were introduced in 1937, which could maintain speeds of over 100 miles an hour, and the LNER were in danger of losing their t title of fastest route to Scotland. Modifications were made to the A4 class, including a Carl Chap blast pipe and a double chimney, which you can see just here. Uh, Mallard was fitted with these, and so that made her the perfect candidate to undertake a test run. Um, running a seven-car train, including a dynamometer car, uh, she descended the uh, Stoke Bank in Lincolnshire. Driver Joe Duddington, Duddington and fireman Thomas, Thomas Bray uh, opened Mallard up, and she achieved a momentary speed of 126 miles an hour, which smashed all other previous records and remained unbroken to this day. The railroad version and... Uh, which is much less detailed, and this version here, which is the premium version. Um, this model in particular is from around 2010, I think. There's a little bit of box damage. Um, and at the time, it cost about £110. Uh, but nowadays, the price is likely to be upwards of £150 um, from local model shops. The Hornby website itself has three versions. Uh, the railroad one, priced at £110. The premium model, which is the equivalent of this, priced at £190 and a special anniversary edition just for this year um, with gold plating and other features pricing at £230, uh, which is a limited edition. Okay, so the box um, is one of Hornby's uh, early designs featuring uh, this, this helpful sleeve here, uh, which uh, has lots of information on the back. Uh, the LNER A4 Express Pacific was probably the most famous of the LNER locomotives. Um, yeah, uh, 3rd of July 1938, um, immortal place in railway history by securing the world steam record. With Joe Dining's in the controls, backed up by fireman Tommy Bray, the locomotive reached 126 miles an hour, uh, which is unbeaten to this day. And yes, I did uh, neglect to mention, uh, she is of course preserved um, and is currently uh, at the National Railway Museum in New York. So uh, that sleeve is very nice. And what do we get inside the box? Well. Um, this is a more traditional style Hornby box. Um, it's uh, just you know sort of the standard red, uh, red, red cardboard box. But inside is the uh, the split box design. So there are two pieces of polystyrene held together by these little plastic clips and a little front plate as well, just to protect the locomotive. And uh, these two pieces of polystyrene. Here, in the top of the box, we have this little pack here, which uh, uh, which features inside it uh, a set of wheels, uh, which will go just under the uh, cab. There, these ones are flanged. The ones that are fitted are not flanged. Uh, the ones which don't have flanges run better around tighter curves. Um, and there's a couple of little details as well. Um, drain cocks uh, in there. As you can see there. Okay, so the model itself. Right, so I'll uh, do the actual locomotive first because that uh, they're in two parts, uh, which is quite helpful actually because it's quite a quite a hefty model. Um, now, if you look at the front, uh, there's some very nice detail around the buffer beam. There's uh, a three chain link. Um, and a dummy brake hose and uh, four lamp irons as is standard on locomotives 
Uh, there's also a nice separately fitted brass whistle. Uh, moving around to the side, we have uh, these side valances here are very nicely detailed. They have uh, rivets running along with panel joins um, and a little hole here, which I think is for uh, access to the uh, to the piston behind uh, behind these skirts here. Um, we have a very nice paint job. Uh, it's uh, LMR Garter Blue, which is uh, their standard uh, livery on A4 locomotives. And um, it's a very nice odd shade of blue, which uh, you don't really see very often. Um, the nameplate here is uh, printed, but it's very nice. Uh, stands out from the uh, from the casing on the locomotive, um, and it's nicely nicely printed. Uh, there is a handrail running along here, separately fitted, um, and that's very nice indeed. Uh, and there's lots of rivets, lots of rivets, all where they should be. Uh, which is very nice to see, nice detail like that, especially for a model um, that's uh, eight years old now. Um, moving along towards the back, the uh, windows here are very nicely glazed, um, and the painting the uh, rim around the windows is very nice as well. Uh, the builder's plate here is very nicely printed. Uh, you can probably just make out the writing uh, if you uh, if you look close enough. Um, that's very nicely printed. You can get etched versions uh, online. Uh, I haven't I haven't invested in one of those yet. Um, the numbering uh, again is very nicely printed. I can't see any sort of uh, blemishes or, or scratches or anything on it. Uh, it seems to be flawless that, um, and it's very nicely uh, reproduces the uh, shadow lettering uh, that was in place uh, on the LNR. Cab detail then, and uh, the cab, de cab is very well detailed indeed. There are seats either side for the driver and fireman. The reverser handle is painted, is picked out in silver, that's very nice. All the pipe work is detailed in gold. Um, the injectors are very nicely picked out in red, and uh, even the dials are printed on, uh, which is very nice, uh, especially from a model from 2010, that would be something exceptional to see. The uh, the motion here is slightly hidden by these these side skirts. Um, they were removed after the war, uh, but and, and during the war. Uh, but these uh, the motion is very nice indeed, especially when it's running. Uh, the wheels are, I believe, they're plastic inserts in the metal, um, or they could just be painted. I'm not sure, um, but they they're picked out in LNR red, um, which is which is true to prototype, and. Um, on top, the double chimney is uh, accurate. Uh, Mallard, as I said earlier, was fitted with a double chimney to improve performance. Um, and the flaps, the uh, the hatches on the top of the uh, cab slide open and shut, which is very nice. Again, from a model this old, it's really something nice to see. And we've got two brass safety valves there as well. And of course, rivets all along the top, as they should be. And uh, yeah, that's that's about it for the locomotive. Moving on to the tender. Uh, the tender is very nice indeed. It's uh, just as well detailed as the locomotive. Um, there's a very nice uh, unblemished paint finish on the side in LNR Garter Blue with the shadow lettering picked out very nicely. Um, the details, the uh, leaf springs, and the axle boxes are very nicely picked out. Perhaps a different colour might have been nice for the axle boxes. I'm not quite sure whether they were painted a different colour or not. Um, the wheels, again, they, they have their um, the red centre as was as is true to prototype. And the brake rodding comes fitted as standard, which is um, something you don't really see on models um, anymore. On the back of the tender, then, uh, the buffer beam is uh, basic, but it's uh, it's it's good enough. It's got a uh, hook for the uh, three chain link. It's got a, a brake hose uh, and steps and a few handrails as well uh, as well as lamp hooks uh, Interestingly the lamp hooks on the back would very rarely have been used of course a streamlined locomotive is designed to travel in, in one direction only um, So the none of this uh, on the back would really ever been used um, except perhaps on uh, heritage railways today uh, And the other side then is, is the same very well detailed indeed uh, looking towards the cab side, there are lots of uh, little decals here um, on the inside, little details. And the two um, handbrakes are very nicely picked out in gold, 
as well as a couple of other little levers um, and such things. So on the top then we have a coal load which I think, yes it is, it is removable, it's quite hard to get out, you have to uh, twist it around a bit but you can get it out um, and it does, uh, that's nice to see because you can fit your own coal load which is a bit more realistic. And uh, this, uh, the filler cap is, is fairly fairly basic but I mean uh, that's that's what it looks like in real life so it's it's true to uh, true to the prototype there um, yeah so the tender could probably be a bit more weighty um, it does have pickups on the bottom I think I'm not quite sure um, but there's probably housing for um, either a DCC chip in here or possibly a speaker um, I'm not quite sure it's quite an old model um, as you can see from the box uh, she is DCC ready uh, which again for, for for the time for 2010 was quite a, a new thing um, It had only been going about three or four years by then um, But it's nice to see that that's uh, that's catered for and uh, Yeah, it's a, it's a very nice model indeed. It's uh, it's got an old style um, Join between the tender and uh, the locomotive. It's a it's a pin and uh, loop system so just uh, pop them in like that um, I think this can be shortened for prototypical um, display only uh, at distance because obviously the distance is slightly increased in order so it can go around uh, tighter corners. But I, I have noticed when running actually these little flaps here can catch on the tender uh, when going around second or even third radius corners. They catch just like that. Um, so you might have to find yourself having to glue those back on at some point. Um, so how does this loco perform? Well, um, I haven't got any running shots for you, but it does perform very, very well. It's very smooth, uh, straight out of the box. Obviously, it re requires a running in session of about 30 minutes in each, di each direction. Um, but after that, she'll be very smooth, uh, and the, the mechanism uh, is flawless as far as I can see. I think it's a five-pole motor, so it's the, what you'd expect from uh, steam locomotives today. Um, and yes, it's a, it's a very good runner and very capable. She can haul trains of 12 coaches or more. Um, it's very, very strong indeed, uh, which is true to prototype again. I mean, it was, a, it was I think it was an 8P uh, classification, which is, which is very strong. So um, just like the real thing, it could pull trains of uh, six, seven, eight, or nine cars, even longer, 12 car trains um, as well. In conclusion then, um, it's a very good model. It could probably have a bit more detail on it. I mean, if we look at something like the Hornby King or um, latest Backman models, some of them are very, very, very well detailed. Um, so perhaps this could uh, could be due a tooling update. I'm not quite sure um, what the most recent version is. Um, but I mean, the the locomotive itself is very, very basic uh, in design. It's it's got these uh, this cladding on the side, which um, which hides most of the detail. Um, so there's really not much uh, to, to add on, as far as I know. Um, generally, it's uh, very well detailed, um, and it's definitely a good buy. If you can find one for the price that I got it at, uh, £110, then that's definitely great value. Um, otherwise, it's a considered purchase, uh, but you should definitely go for one if you've got an LNER-based layout, uh, set in the 30s or 40s, um, or a preservation-era layout, that could also work. Um, any layout, it really works because uh, as a preserved locomotive, she runs um, all over the network, or she she did uh, for a time. At the moment, she's static um, at York. Um, yeah, so it's a very nice model. It's very appealing. Um, a really nice colour, really nice paint finish. Very good job from Hornby there. Um, and yes, I, I would definitely recommend you go and buy one um, if you if you so desire. They're definitely good models to have. And uh, yeah, I really. I really think you should invest in one.